Hello. Um, I must say, it's a fucking relief. Whew. Um, what the fuck was I thinking? Oh, to, to finally, to finally come to the last of the report cards. Um, no, I don't know. Why, why the hell did I do it? like this but it has i've got to admit it has been a really worthwhile experience but at times i don't know it just felt like that i was never going to get there um and the plan was always to to finish it before the national draft and i'm about a couple of weeks before the national draft so i'm happy with that but it has been a process which i don't know could have been done a lot more efficient but i'm not a i'm not an efficient type person in fact my def if I was a if I was a footballer, my disposal efficiency would be running at around about sixty six percent. Yeah, um, I'm not. I don't have great in, in, uh, efficiency inside forward fifty. But anyway, we are up to the um, we are up to the last of the player report cards. And um, Matthew Cottrell, he look, <laughs> he always has been. I think you always have your favourites. Um, and I was really, really hard on him at the end of last year, really hard on him, more because I was probably a little bit disappointed. I thought he was a little bit lucky to hang on um, and get another contract. Um, I'm glad he did, but I was really, really hard on him, only because I was disappointed with him, the way he sort of finished off last year. Um, but a lot of that is probably understandable considering, you know, the... the the mess the joint was in, really. But I just think he's grown somewhat this year. I still think he's not there and there's no guarantees with him. Um, but he is a little bit of a favourite of mine. Um, uh, I don't want to be biased with him, though, because I was really fucking hard on him last year and I, and I thought he was very lucky. So I, I do like him, though. I do like him. Um and I want him to do really well. I really, I really do. Uh, I just, I just like his story. I just like him. Sort of like the way he plays as well. Uh, but he is, you know, like a lot of players on our list. He is, he is limited. But he, I want him to nail the role. I want him to nail that winger's role. I really do. I want him to take that next step, not to be a superstar, but just the next step to be a really effective AFL footballer in the fabric in the fabric of our football team. Can he do it? We have to wait and see. Well here we go anyway. 22 years of age. So he's, a, he's still a pup. He's still he, he's still a pup. Um, hasn't even played 50 games yet. 37 games uh, four years he's been at the football club. Um, 18 games this year, which was good, although four of those were as a sub. And, and I suppose the pleasing thing when he was a sub, he got an opportunity. So he was an activated sub. And he every time he was, he made an impact. He made a significant impact. And I remember sort of thinking, geez, you, if, you feel like if you could have a player that could be a professional sub, um, he felt like the player that could do that for us. He, I mean, it, not, it wasn't like he could go down and fill in as a key position, but you always knew he was going to give great effort and great energy and a bit of a spark. He's got something about him in, in regards to making an impact at, at certain times in games. And we saw that when he first started. Um, you know, if we look at his game spans, he spent a whole year in the VFL uh, back in 2019 and then got an opportunity in the hub. Remember, he he had that that game against the Sydney Swans where he kicked the winner, and he showed a lot of passion, and, and he was sort of like a goalkeeper. He, sorry, a goal kicker. He'd pop up and um, became a little bit of a cult hero, and he fell away a little bit last year. He played to fourteen, but his form fluctuated, um, and this year, yeah, he's shown it that he's built and and shown a little bit more consistency and the way he goes about it. Uh, he's a winger. I, I, I can't... I know he played at times as a defensive forward. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a, that's a role that we are going to pursue with. I think, you know, he's either a winger or he's not. You know, I think he, he, he nails that spot or he basically becomes redundant. 
That's the way I see it with, with Matthew Cottrell. I'd be very surprised if he pops up somewhere. I, I'd just be surprised. Um, you know, suddenly he plays in the forward pocket and he becomes like a fucking leading leading small forward and, and becomes multiple goal. I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if that happens. Um, rewarded with a two-year deal, which is great for him. I, I, I'm really pleased that he got that two-year deal and not a, a one-year deal so he can develop. Seems like a great person around the footy club. So be with us in 224. Um, and we remember where, how we picked him up. Um, I, I, I remember it because it was in a time where I first started this channel. Um, and I was going to a lot of open training sessions. And I just remember, you know, the, the, the disappointment of losing Doc uh, with his second knee injury, ACL. And then in a matter of two weeks, uh, Jared Pickett, um, went down with a PCL at training. And I was actually not far from when that happened. And yeah, we just knew then and there that that was really serious. And uh, it meant that we, the two, two, um, two spots opened up, up on the list. And I think it was the first time that the AFL brought in a, a supplemental sort of pre-season type mini draft where you could sort of bring some players in and, and top your list up. Um, and we decided, or Sauce thought, okay, um, we'll let a couple of guys come and train with us. There's no guarantee that they'll both sort of make it. In fact, we didn't even know if, um, either Michael Gibbons and Matthew Cottrell, little redhead kid from the under-18s, had been overlooked in the draft. And we knew the story of Michael Gibbons, um, you know, experienced AFL player. Um, and they both train really well. They both train really well in that preseason. And yeah, I suppose it came as a little surprise that we we gave them both. I thought Gibbons would be a definite, not so much Cottrell, but we both we gave him a contract, um, a rookie contract. And, and Gibbons obviously made an immediate impact and played a lot of footy, but Cottrell had to make his way, um, you know, with no football in his first year. So, um you know, so so he's been with us, and to get that two-year deal, um, it's I think it's a big deal uh, for him, and and a, and a great little sort of uh, story of perseverance, um, sort of coming from nowhere. He's a, he's a he's a he's a great runner. I mean, we know that he's a superb runner, uh, but I feel like there's a little bit more than that to him. You know, I think we've seen you know, great runners in the past given opportunities and never quite made it. But I don't know, he, he, he can play. He can play the game. He's got some got some pretty good traits as a footballer. I mean he's not he's not super special, but he's got some good traits that I think the club can see um, some further development with him. Um, I love his story this year because uh, you look at his season um, as a whole, um, you know he he Probably a fraction unlucky. Um, you know, Voss comes in. Who's he going to start as his, as his wingers? Um, you know, and it's become a really sort of specific position now, the wing position. Um, so I went with Setterfield, went with O'Brien for the first four rounds. And, and, and Cotters, um, it wasn't like we were up in arms about him, or I wasn't anyway, but I just, I don't know. I just... I felt okay. You're going with O'Brien, Setterfield. They've got to they've got to show their worth. But um, to Cottrell's credit, he went in the VFL, uh, put in the hard yards, uh, played the first three games of the season in the VFL. Was really good. Uh, was good against Brisbane. Um, was excellent against quality opposition in Box Hill, and then had a, another really good game where he kicked a couple of goals and over 20 disposals against the Gold Coast Suns. And he just kept banging the door down, banging the door down. And uh, the form fluctuated with with Lockie O'Brien. He had one, I think, one good game against the Western Bulldogs, and he dropped away and they dropped him. You know, he uh, they omitted him. And, and Cotters came in. He came in. Uh, he was really good in his first game against Port Adelaide, had it 22 times. Um, and then, you know, he sort of in combination with Setterfield, on one wing, O'Brien, and then O'Brien had come back in, and then, yeah, it was all sort of all over the joint. They couldn't really nail that position, but Cotters remained in the team for the rest of the year, although he did have some times where he was the medical sub, but to remain in the team and never really be, well, he was never really admitted, I think that's a feather in his cap. I really do. Um, I think, I think 
Michael Voss really trusted him um, that he could at least play that role, that role on the wing and give us some really good service. Um, without, I keep using that term, but without setting the world on fire, um, I think he was, he was sort of slowly developing into a, you know, a reasonably consistent AFL footballer with excellent, with excellent running ability. Um, and we saw that on a number of occasions this season. Um, statistically, look, nothing jumps out here. Uh, but oh, what it doesn't recognise is the fact that he's still running on top of the ground. You know, when others are tiring, he just has this incredible, incredible ability. And look about him. If you're at a game live and the uh, blokes are sort of dry, Dragging their fucking legs, he is actually motoring. Um, he's motoring. You know, his speed's still good. He's, yeah. I think that could be. Hopefully, that can be a weapon for him if he can just get other parts of his game sort of, you know, up and about. You know, but his disposal really improved. Efficient efficiency is elite, seventy six percent. I think that may surprise a few people, but he is. Really confident on both sides of his body. He's not a penetrating kick. Um, he's below average, well, sorry, average in metres gained because um, he's not a long kick. Um, but he's, an, he, he's actually really good and really serviceable um, with his ball use. Uh, I remember when he first started, he was all over the shop um, with his ball use. So that's an area he has improved. He's above average in inter intercept possessions. I think this is one of his strengths as a winger. Um, he's actually really good over his head. Um, he's really strong in the air for his size. Um, it's a real, it's a real ability of his. Um, he's uh, he's average disposals, but that's 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 actually increasing and getting better with experience and more ground time. So he was running at ten point eight last year. Um, this year he's up to fourteen point eight. And you just think with more development and more experience, you could just see that growing. Um, as he gains more confidence. Uh, average in score involvements, uh, metres gained, I mentioned, below average. Oh, this one, below average in tackles, below average in pressure acts. He's not a strong, physically strong player, and it's probably the area of his game that I probably have the most doubts in. Um, can he get really stronger? I'm not saying he, he's, not, he's definitely not scared. He's definitely not intimidated. But he's not strong. He's not physically strong. He's no Pickett. He's no McIntosh at Richmond, who are who are good runners, got great engines, but they're also quite strong. They're mature, strong bodies. And he's still growing this kid, but I don't know. I just feel like because he's such an elite runner, and that's what he relies on, can he put on some size? Can he put some, some real muscle on? Um, to become just a little bit better in the contest. Um, I'm not really going to pick on any was it a bad games because I thought he was actually really consistent. He played the four as a sub. So it's un probably a little bit unfair to try to look at his season and go, oh, these are the games he was really poor at. But like, just a couple of ones for me that, that stood out. Um, <laughs> I loved his game against Melbourne in round 22. He played on Langdon, and I just, I mean, he only had 18 touches, but I just thought he was such a live wire when we got going in that second quarter. Uh, there was one time there where he got the ball on the half forward flank and sort of zipped in and out of traffic and um, kicked the ball around his body. And it was a beautiful kick inside forward 50, and he just stood out. I remember the Melbourne supporters sitting around where we were sitting going, geez, he's fucking who's on this Cottrell? Um, yeah. Uh, I loved his game against Melbourne. I really liked the game. And I spoke about, you know, I spoke about McIntosh. I spoke about Pickett, who I thought were really good wingers for Richmond this year. I thought probably his best game for the year was, was the Thursday night game against the Tigers, um, where he just ran all night, you know, and he sort of, he, he helped us sort of remain in that game when others were down here 23 to, or 21 times. Uh, just did a power of work that night. So strengths, um, at the moment, he's a busy player without being busy, if you know what I mean. Um, 
yeah, can he lift that disposal rate? Can he get more involved in the game and become more of an offensive threat? So he is busy. He looks busy. There's certain times where he looks like he's making an impact, but yeah, maybe that's just for the role, the, the wing role. But he needs to model his game, say, on a on an Ed Langdon. Similar size, similar running cap capacities. Um, that's where he needs to get to. Um, I reckon he can make an impact. He, as I said before, he makes an impact at certain times, whether it's in the air, whether it's with a goal, whether it's a kick inside forward 50, whether it's with a bounce or two, open the game up, he makes an impact. He's a, got running power galore, both with endurance and with speed. He's shown improvement. He's shown improvement. I think he's a good mark for his size. Weaknesses, definitely strength. Um, that contest work tackling and class, um, you know, overlooked. He just maybe lacks a bit of class. Um, but can we get away with it in the position he plays on the wing? One word for Matthew Cottrell. He's a, he's a fighter. Um, he's a fighter. Love him. I love the way he goes about it. Does that mean he's going to be a regular with us? I'm giving him 5.5 out of 10. Um, and this is the way I see it right now with the recruitment of Blake Akers. I see O'Brien, no Jack Nunes anymore, no Will Setterfield anymore. You know, I don't see them playing Chera or Walsh on a wing. I just think they'll be running through the midfield. So for me, it's Akers and Cottrell and O'Brien fight it out for that other spot on the wing. And right here, right now, I love what Cottrell does, although, although yeah, I think they I think they like both, but they're both going to fight it out for that spot on the other wing. Um, come, come round one against uh, whoever we play in 2023. Tell me, guys. Tell me, guys. This has been the last one. Pleasure to get through them. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your comments. Please, please um, share these videos around. Subscribe, whatever that may be. Please tell me about Matthew Cottrell. Do you like him? Can you see him becoming um, part of our future? Part of our future, a genuine part of our future. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Speak soon.